What's up, everybody? It's your boy Marsman here. And today I'm joined with the Marsman crew to break down the biggest games coming out for April 2023. And this is a new video, uh, new video segment that we are actually introduced to the channel where we're going to try to give you the preview for the best games coming this month. And we're going to try to do the work for you to at least get you excited about some games and maybe some games you probably never heard of before. And it's going to be our job to kind of give you the rundown of what games to look out for this coming month. And let me tell you guys, there's actually a lot of games that are being dropped this month that I actually were very surprising to me when you think about the major list. And, and obviously there's um, a good amount from all different platforms. So if you are a exclusive, you know, a fanboy of one of the consoles or you are like us that play multiple different consoles out there, you are in for some good, good eats uh, this month. So let's just do a quick rundown. So what we have coming out relatively soon and this is actually an indie game it's uh it's it looks like meet your maker and uh, of the of this recording it is dropping the fourth um so we it's actually very soon uh but let's take a look at a few others we have Mega Man battle network legacy which is a 60 dollar game with a combination of 11 games of the Mega Man series combined um very massive collection here uh, we have Minecraft Legends coming in the 18th of April, $40 standard edition with a $50 deluxe edition. Oh boy, you got some cosmetics dropping in there uh, in some fashion. We have the Horizon Forbidden West Burning Shores DLC dropping the 19th of April, exclusive to PSI, PS5 only, which is obviously very unique with $20 for that one. Advance Wars 1 and 2 Reboot Camp, I say that five times fast if you want. For April 21st, only on the Switch. It's a combination of the first two games. A lot of cool things to talk about there. Dead Island 2, April 21st on PC, PS5, as well as the Xbox. And uh, obviously, that is a very coveted game. A lot of people have been talking about that one coming back. As well as Star Wars Jedi Survivor, April 28th, PC, PS5, and the Xbox. And that was obviously the sequel to the previous uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order very very successful game overall very probably one of the few <laughs> ea star wars uh successful yeah. games out there um and then obviously i already mentioned before meteor maker is the indie game but we also have a few others after image coming out the 25th on all consoles pcp playstation xbox and the switch and the last case of benedict fox april 27th pc and xbox release and those are the general game coming out now obviously I can just give you a list of games here, but our job is to kind of give you a heads up on some games that we found to be the most interesting. And I'll jump in first. I think the biggest one I'm looking at right now is obviously the Star Wars Jedi Survivor. I think a lot of people have been super interested about this game, and so have I. I the first one, I thought the ending of that game was phenomenal. I thought as, as a Star Wars fan, if you weren't hyped at the end, and I'm not going to ruin it for anybody who has not played it yet, but if you played the first game and you saw and you got played through the entire thing and then that ending you got with the music from Star Wars hitting at the right time, you were excited because you're like, hey, this is actually an IP that is successful, hits all the right marks, and it tells a brand new story of, of new characters, including some faces that you've seen from the previous Star Wars legacy titles. And that is something that a lot of people aren't really, you know, they, they, they don't understand how difficult it is or really how amazing it is to actually see a star wars ip get it to do for once and so that's why i'm super excited for this obviously this is a continuation of the narrative and obviously we're, we're seeing really the full kind of the full picture of this i think it's supposed to be more about really kind of maybe drifting into that storyline with like how obi-wan tv show was where it's like you the life outside uh, you know living as a survivor of order 66 and kind of what comes along with it but i was trying to hide away from the you know from the empire and and seeing what will happen next they didn't give a lot of background into this story it's kind of really well open and i'm super excited about it because obviously it's it's it's, it's gonna be the max it's max price it's respawn it's ea 70 dollars price tag yeah that's that's i was gonna come with along with it but respawn has been shown to be a very successful brand or or publisher that uh, sorry, developer that EA has in their and their umbrella, and hearing those words together usually is very rare. Right, seeing hearing EA and a very good developer under their belt is different. Right, and they have done a great job at bringing that that atmosphere Star Wars to the light. So I really want to see 
how they do in this in this sequel. But yeah. I want to, yeah, I want to hear. Uh, you know, you guys have anything opinions about this game? I think overall, I, I, more, I yeah. yeah, more battle stances and uh, customizable character. You can customize the main character um, with you know different hair, different you know facial hair um, and stuff like that, which is you know. And the gameplay of the first game was really strong. What does surprise me though. It doesn't feel like it was marketed very high. No, right? so that's the no. only thing that was a little strange. That that is something that I I did notice as well, and I think that the customizations of this game are going to drastically outweigh the they what they were in the first one. Based on that alone, it tells you that at least Respawn kind of realizes that some of the things that they that they struggled with in the first game they are at least addressing. And the question is going to be how much more are you going to address with that? So. Uh, hockey anything here before we move on to, I, I want to get your guys opinion on your favorite titles yeah so and, and yeah so um about star wars i'm probably a game or two behind uh but i know it was the last star wars that was it was a difficult game right but it was good it was yeah it yeah. was not easy right. like you know there's a difference between the star wars fallen order the uh, jedi fallen order versus like the force awakens like the force awakens was more of a kind of like a hack and slash like a god of war like the classic god of yeah. war games different and, and all yeah that. yeah different light yeah lightsabers or color and then you just start slashing away at a bunch of people and powers that just make you just devastate enemies this is more like a kind of a realistic approach to it more about counters um it was difficult to kind of remind me it's like a lighter version of sekiro in a way like where it was more about parrying and combinations and understanding like when to attack when to avoid mm -hmm. and using your force abilities in that way and i thought that was a really good game um and the fact that they created the different stances, which a lot of people, that's the lore of Star Wars, is the stances and how you utilize them is going to be really important. That is something that I really find interesting here. Um, so let's go with Langelical next. What game are you interested out of that list we talked about uh, that you think that people should be looking at? Yeah, if you told me at the start of the year about the game I was about to say, I probably would have called you crazy. But Death Island 2 coming out the 21st. And this is 12 years after the first Dead Island. Um, it's made by Dan Buster Studios. And this wasn't actually the original studios that uh, was working on the game. It has been repeated, like it's been delayed so many times. I remember watching this at an E3 trailer many years ago. Um, and I was like, wow, this game never came out. And it's just an absolute development hell, they call it. So why am I excited? I saw a gameplay trailer for this game and it actually really impressed me i mean this is obviously a 69.99 game the standard price does make me a little nervous they got a deluxe edition at 74.99 and a gold edition at 89.99 for this game but i tell you what the gameplay trailer is a first person rpg horror comedy a lot of zombies but what really liked i liked about it the open world aspects and the co-op multiplayer, a lot of customization on the weapons that you can use to fight some of these zombies. It's in the suburbs of L.A. Um, I just really like the different weapons that you saw in the gameplay trailer. There's different zombie types, um, but playing with some friends, mowing down some zombies in different methods and different ways is something that intrigues me. And it feels like it could fill the void that we thought Back for Blood was going to fill and it did not. And so... I am cautiously optimistic, but the trailer, the gameplay trailer, to me, really impressed in Dead Island 2. Yeah, man, if you think about it, I think this is such a long time ago. I always see those trailers kind of resurface at a certain point where it was the announcement trailer of Dead Island 2, where it shows that guy, uh, you know, that, that kind of L.A. dude just running down yeah. the street, yeah. like jogging, yeah. and everyone else around. It's like a beach day, and everyone's like kind of doing normal stuff. All of a sudden, yeah. zombies show up like that, and he's like slowly turning into yeah. a zombie. Yeah. Like that trailer got that was so many, many years ago, right? Yeah, that was at so E3. I don't even ago. remember what year that was. That was, yeah, that was a long I, time I also ago. forgot to mention this is PC, Sony, and Xbox um, that, that it's on. So all the all the consoles. Yeah, except, except Switch. for Switch. Yeah, except for yeah. Switch. Uh, Haki, anything uh, you want to add to that uh, for this Dead Island 2? I, I, I am interested in it. I do want to see some more stuff on it for sure. Yeah, so I don't know if I saw the same trailer that Frank saw or Langelica, but yeah, it was super like gory and like almost yeah. funny. Like you're chopping off limbs and yep. eyeballs yep. are popping off and you're yeah. blowing off people's legs. I mean, it looked fun. Definitely can be a, um, you know, a run and gun type of game with your boys. So, I mean, if you guys get it, I'll probably get it, but definitely not getting that, that $90 one. I'm, I'm, <laughs> that gold edition $70, for you? you know, has yeah. been $70 nowadays, so. Yeah. So, uh, so Haki, what's your game that you're looking forward to this month? 
Yeah, so I never thought that I would ever say this, and I'm sure you guys might be on the same boat, but um, Minecraft Legends yeah. actually looks like something that could be fun. Uh, we're all going to play it together, uh, probably on stream. It is available on uh, all consoles, even PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, uh, I believe, as well, which is pretty cool. So if you don't have the new system, you can still get this game. Uh, and it, it's been following the trend. It has a deluxe version, uh, $49.99. <laughs> Looks like it's just cosmetics. I'm not going to be getting that after Battlefield, never again. Um, uh, $39.99 is not a terrible price. That's just yeah. for the regular game. But and oh, so oh yeah, here. So the the most important part for us is going to it's going to be on Game Pass, right? So um, we've been playing a bunch of games on Game Pass just in the last couple of weeks. So um, that's big for us. We don't really have to spend money on it or feel like we're spending money on it, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's touted as a like an action strategy game. Uh, it's got two parts. It's got the story mode, which the main Minecraft never has had a story mode. They, they put out something called Minecraft story mode. So yeah. um, this isn't they're gonna it's not gonna be their first crack at it. So you're gonna be able to play a campaign with your friends, and then the more important part for us, I think, is gonna be the PvP um, mode. So. Or yeah. Before, you know, we got to grab one other person. You know, maybe my brother Danny might have on some money. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's going to be a hard sell, but um, you know, there's, it seems like there's a lot of cool things. Um, you know, each session is is different. You know, you'll never have like the same map, chests, and items, and you know, things you have to gather will all be different on each you know game uh, session that you join. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, but piglins, I think they're yeah, called. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, little enemies those yeah. guys will be running around the map as well so if you're out scavenging or doing something you'll actually have to fight them as well um but the cool thing is you get to be a team you get to use you know uh, strategy your imagination to build your fort and then go attack another person's fort so you gotta have to have you know good teamwork and uh you know a, a ability to build which i mean i played fortnite and you know <laughs> I can build something but i don't yeah. know if i can build some of these things that i'm seeing already on on the gameplay but mm -hmm. um you know I, I think it's gonna be fun and i'm happy that it's on game pass we, we get to play it uh like we've been playing the rest of the games on game pass as well yeah i mean the, and the cool thing is and you mentioned the big thing is that game pass right i feel like a lot of people will definitely try this game and see how they like it and if you're a mm -hmm. minecraft fan it's essentially the same level of uh you know it, it, minecraft legends is like a, a portion of minecraft right in yeah, general like, aspects of minecraft yeah yeah, yeah, yeah it's minecraft. like it's like one it's like a game it's like technically a game mode you can play within your own mod um within your own within your own server basically where you're playing pvp against people but you also have computers kind of stationed throughout the map that kind of you have to combat uh compete for resources then combat against each other and try to destroy the other's base so it's kind of like that simple gameplay and you can go matchmaking online. I'm sure they're going to have a lot of different modes that you can add into and all that stuff. So it seems like a pretty cool overall experience. And I'll talk about some things that I think uh, before we move on to the next segment, I think I'll mention some titles here that I felt were, uh, you know, possibly something to keep in mind to look at and see how they perform. One of the first ones I'm going to because I, it's, I've me and me and Frank have played this game for a long time, but Advanced Wars one to yeah. reboot camp i mean we we might stream this live uh on one of the days uh for our if you don't know we stream at least two to three days a week you can check that in the description below on our twitch channel we also do a day for youtube um but we are thinking about obviously doing one of the game one of the nights for streaming advanced wars wanted to reboot camp because it was a game that we grew up playing it's like one of those advanced versions of chess it's a strategy game and this game is going to be 60 dollars on the switch and it's a combination of the first two games combined that continue that storyline and into its completion. And I think what's really cool about this is it brings back that co-op. It's up to local, up to four people can play on one console, which is good. You can play online co-op with people, which is yeah. also good. And a lot within this, there's obviously a lot of good story maps to play, but there's also like War Room, which was a classic. It was like basically completing against computers in their own map scenarios. Um, now, the only the hope I have here is 
that I know they mentioned that they weren't really adding a lot from the previous two games. It seems like it's just the base two games and just yeah, there's a, a big a change in animations. I think yeah, a, a, definitely a big update in, in animations. Like if you look at the characters and they look completely yeah. different or up, way updated. I mean, it's Sturm to me looks like I don't really like the way Sturm looks in this game, but Sturm, <laughs> Sturm's one of my favorite characters in the game. But he's straight up looks like a horror. He just looks horrible. But um, I think they they definitely helped with that. My only hope, though, is that with this now game installed and, and hopefully they get enough people buying it, that maybe Nintendo might look into adding like the, du the dual strike maps or dual strike campaign into this or even add oh, more boy. room. That would be the, the, hopium best. Right now. the hope. Your the hopium. hopium is live because I feel like <laughs> dual strike had probably one of the best war yeah. room compilations because it had all the old ones and then a bunch of new ones uh, added to it and everything. And I felt like that would be such a good thing to be able to see on that, my, in my opinion, overall. Yeah. Um, but the other one, uh, before we get to the last segment, is Horizon Forbidden West Burning Shores DLC. This is obviously dropping the, the 19th only on PS5. And now obviously a lot, this caused a lot of people to be really angry about this because it was obviously put on both the PS5 and PS4. And obviously this continues the game directly right after the Horizon Forbidden West uh, story had ended. And obviously following Aloy, uh, but this is going into looks like Hollywood. You're going to Los Angeles yeah. now, which is obviously a obviously a different part of California, which the original game was was located in. Um, but the 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 big thing about this is that this is they announced um, that this is the last story expansion until the new game releases. So wow. that means you're not going to get another story expansion for roughly two or three years or how, even longer, depending on how long this development is going to be for this game. So this is a big deal for the series. I think you need to, yeah. as much as, and like I said, people will rag on Horizon Forbidden West, and I had some my own criticisms. It landed around 87 on Metacritic, which really is not a bad game at all. It kind of was put in a bad situation, like it always has in the, in the last game as well. Horizon Forbidden, uh, you know, Horizon Zero Dawn. Comes out at a terrible time. Coming out, Horizon Zero Dawn came out with Breath of the Wild and Mario Odyssey the same year, and you're like, there's no shot you're gonna win Game of the Year. It was close that time that year, but yeah. you're not winning it when that those games are dropping alongside, and and then this one's dropping with God of War and Elden, Elden Ring. Ring. Like yeah. you're you're <laughs> literally no the shot, worst. there's no shot of winning Game of the Year, and and yeah. they weren't even in the convert like they. They, they, oh, they just, were finalists. But they were finalists, but it yeah. wasn't like no one ever thought like, oh, oh Horizon's gonna win. Like nobody. Yeah, it was it was a narrow down between the two the two freaking monsters, the two titans, and that was the point. And that th it feels like this game has been always put in a really bad situation every time. Like if this was put on one of those off years with like Sekiro was the winner, like yeah, it yeah. would be competitive. I think it would be very competitive, um, but it wasn't. And so a lot of people look at look past this game because the criticisms was that the story didn't really entice you until later on and that was one of my criticisms so this is really a good test right it's twenty dollars it's yeah. not a lot of money this here yeah. is the old dlc pricing right and they're they're giving you a chance to just let's continue the story and if you land it's roughly around eight hours of gameplay they said excluding the side missions so that's it's not the life effect. fall forty dollars. Yeah. I mean, no, yeah, fifty dollars. Crazy. Yeah, think of, crazy. Just think about that. Life fall, yeah. which has a Garbo story compared with Frank, our, our, our destiny uh, correspondent, Langella Kill said, uh, forty dollars just didn't land. This is half that price, and if it does land, then that's a very good bargain price yeah. to get at, at a good story. And I can guarantee you, the look of the games, the look of the DLC is going to be really nice. They always do a really good job with the art design. Um, so that that is kind of like my feelings overall. Anything from you guys before we get the last segment? No, I think you I think you hit it on the head. Uh, I think it's a good price point. Um, I will defend going to the PS5, and also you have to beat the original game to play the DLC. So make sure you beat that game before you're going to get an yeah. opportunity to play it. So that is a little knock. I do agree. That is probably a, a little bit of a turnoff, but I do defend them for going PS5. Hey, they're trying to give the best graphics. PS5. Uh, can do it ps4 couldn't or it would have been delayed so i don't blame them for just sticking to the ps5 yeah uh hockey anything else man before we jump um i'm just gonna agree 20 uh 20 beans is not a lot it's not a you know a, almost a whole another game so i think if yeah. you got the money you know spend it uh, it's a very original game you know there's yeah uh a very cool aspect to the game i haven't played it i've watched the gameplay but um you know once i get a ps5 uh you know i'll probably cop that game it's a 
Yeah. So let's jump down to the indies. And this is obviously a, a, a good thing that is kind of exposed these indie games as being possible cool. things to buy into. Because a lot of times these indie games and developers really have some gems. And sometimes we look right past them because we don't see the big you know, developer tag on top of them. I mean, having EA as a publisher or having like, you know, any multitude of others like Square Enix or all these other big brands that can really show these giant showcase games. But these indies can really land in a good spot. And, and really the big question about from to everybody here is, are there any indies that you look at as a possible, very interesting thing to, to kind of jump into? I'll start with mine first. I felt like the last case of Benedict Fox, a lot of people were getting really hyped about this game when they first showed it. Um, I think it was roughly around two years ago at the at the showcase. Um, it was, uh, sorry, yeah, during the last showcase, they showed a glimpse of it. It's a 2D game. It's very, has very dark, like, overtones. It's, like, basically a, a detective going against a kind of, like, a demon. He's is, is basically trying to go after some demons. He's also a demon himself and a detective. So he has, like, these little, like, some powers that go along with your character. Um, and it, it, a lot of intrigue behind it. And I think a lot of people were interested because it's only 30 bucks in price range, just like a lot of these indies, very small um, in the amount of money you're going to pay. But it's also included on Game Pass. And it's only an, it's an Xbox exclusive xbox to pc exclusive so um it's a lot of people are thinking about hey you know this a lot of people are intrigued about the art design and the way the game looks so it's a very interesting game to me to try out I, I'll, I'll probably try it out when it drops april 27th um but like i said it's it's if you're not into if you're not into that 2d style i mean i really like ori for example ori was a really great game obviously i felt like they did a good job you there's a lot of good storytelling you could do with two game 2d games a lot of people look past that because it's, it's still only 2d um but they you could do a really good job with it if you landed the right way so it looked really interesting to me uh langella kill do you have any indies here man yeah um one you mentioned at the top of the show um and I, i'm not sure if it's called is it after image or after i mage i'm not sure if they're trying to you know because the the lettering has a lowercase i i believe so yeah not sure which way they're going with but this is coming out april 25th on a pc sony uh consoles xbox consoles and the switch so this is hitting all cylinders of consoles 29.99 similar pricing like you mentioned made by aragon uh shanghai published by modus games and this is a hand-drawn 2D action adventure, fast-paced combat, diverse characters, and non-linear levels. And you mentioned a game that, you know, the art design. This is this is what really intrigued me was the art design of this game, seeing some of the trailers for it. And it reminded me of Ori, um, a kind of beautifully drawn, uh, kind of realistic, uh, you know, atmosphere. And I tell you what, you know, it would not surprise me if I don't think this game reaches Ori levels, but art design could reach Ori levels from what I've seen. And I think that is a fantastic um, level to reach. I was really impressed by the art design watching this game. Yeah. Uh, Haki, anything? I, I know you were mentioned before the, uh, the one of the other ones we had talked about. Anything, any words on any indies you like? Yeah. So I'm not huge into indie games, but, you know, since getting into Elden Ring and kind of uh, broadening my horizon, uh, I might look into some of these indie games because, like you guys were saying, it's not a $60 game. It's not a $70 game. It's 30 bucks. So, um, you know, there could be some gems like, like, uh, Marsman had said, the one that stood out to me that I thought was just kind of super original was, uh, meet your maker. So it's kind of like a FPS game mixed with like creating your own maze and attacking other people's mazes. Yeah. It's like, you have to go into a building. I forgot what you're searching for, but um, if you're making your building and making your, you know, maze, you put it anywhere in the building and then you start setting booby traps, like it's Indiana Jones or something, you know, you <laughs> start loading it with booby traps. Um, as well as you can then go and attack other people's um, forts, I guess we can call it. Uh, the gameplay looked pretty cool. Uh, one thing I, I liked was that you could it always records like your maze or your your building always records so you can actually watch people go through your building and watch where they died and like yeah, yeah. you know laugh at them or you know people are getting through your building too quickly or, or, or you know figuring out your maze you can you know go back into the game and change it up a little bit and just try to stop as many people as you can so i mean am i gonna get it i don't know but out of the indie games that one looked very original and pretty interesting yeah, and plus the the gold, uh, the good thing about this uh, indie is that it is dropping day one on PlayStation Plus if you are a subscriber yeah. to that. Yeah. So it's yeah. a similar concept to Xbox Game Pass. 
you're getting it on day one so and you get it for the whole month of april before they take it off and it's going alongside like sackboy a big adventure obviously it's a big yeah, well-known yeah. game on playstation so um i think at the end of the day if you have playstation plus j definitely jump into it yeah. and give these indies some love and let's see if these games can can break through that barrier um that a lot of people don't really look at indies mainly because of the fact they aren't big titles right but at yeah. the end of the day indies can can really hit you right in the feels if it has good writing good gameplay and good art to design and a lot of times i notice these indies always landed on the art design it's just can they land on the other aspects more often and that's really going to be the big question with all the titles we had mentioned but that's going to be it for us guys please if you haven't done so yet hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more future content and if you haven't done so go check us out on twitch we stream two to three days a week that is located in the description below are there any games on this list that you found to be really interesting make sure you drop what you think in the comments below and join us on all of our socials also located in the description below until next time this is the mars Manicu signing off peace out guys